It's, ex it's exciting times that we're in, church. Exciting times. And we have a lot to look forward to and to anticipate. You know, our heart is to do the will of God and to follow Him in all things. Uh, if there's any other ambition out there other than that, then we're following and searching after the wrong thing. So we're, we're seeking to serve the Lord, amen, and to follow Him. Um, if you would, turn your Bibles this morning to Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verses 1 and 2 this morning. Um, if you're like me, you have one or more people in your life but, that you kind of look up to in the faith. Uh, people that you look at and you think, man, I, I want to have a faith like theirs. And when I talk about faith, I'm not, I'm not talking about just a confession of faith. I'm talking about a faith that is put into act, to action. Um, like James, the half-brother of Jesus, when he writes in James chapter 2, he he says that he says that you show me your faith by by what you say, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. I'm talking about a faith that's put into action. There's certain people in my life that I that I look up to who have what I view to, to be a strong faith, a faith that, that steps into action, a faith that that has brought them through hardships, trials, and tribulations. The, those difficult times in their lives, and you've seen them, as difficult it is, what, as it is, you've seen them come out on the other side of it and, and somehow come through it victoriously in a, in a way that they have not lost their faith, but they become stronger because of their circumstance. Talking about a faith of a, of a person who, who steps out and, and, and obeys God, no matter their costs, no matter their circumstances, no matter how difficult the, that which God has called them to do is. They are faithful and they step out and they do what God has called them to do. I'm talking about that kind of faith, church. And here in Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, here in Hebrews chapter 12 we see another group of people with this kind of faith that I'm talking about. And, and we're, I'm going to read just the first little part of, of verse 1. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now I want to stop and talk about that just for a moment. Who is this? What is this great cloud of witnesses? Well, this great cloud of witnesses is everyone with whom the writer of Hebrews has mentioned over in chapter 11. And I want to share with you just a few names that, that are mentioned as being... Um, as, as being these patriarchs of faith. And, and we'll start here. It's Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab. And then it says, it starts here in verse 32 of chapter 11. It says, And what more shall I say for the time would fail me to, to, to tell of Gideon and, and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, and also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women were seen their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And then, writer of Hebrews is saying here that, listen, we have this great cloud of witnesses, these patriarchs of faith who have gone before us, these people that we can look back on in Scripture and, and learn from their stories and see their devotion to the Lord and, and how strong their faith was and their God and, and how regardless and, and in spite of the, the hardships that they faced, they remained faithful to their Lord. And they did not give in to, to the hardships. They continued on. And they pressed forward and they didn't find themselves getting discouraged or find themselves in a place where they, were, where they were stepping away from that which God had called them to, but they were continuing on in it. 
devoted, determined to be obedient, to follow through with what God has called them to. These patriarchs, the patriarchs of the faith. And then the writer of Hebrews finishes verse 1 with this. He, he says, let us, church, let us, because we have this great cloud of witnesses, this example that has been placed before us, let us lay aside, he says, every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. But what is this weight? Well, I'm glad you asked, church. Because I've got, a, I've got a list that I've compiled of some different weights that I want to share with you this morning. But first of all, I want us to pretend that we all have a spiritual backpack that we carry with us, okay? So this is a spiritual backpack, so pretend like you can't see it, okay? It's not really here. There are many things that we face, many things that we carry with us that act as burdens in our lives and weights and hindrances in this race that you and I are involved in because church, as Christians, we're all involved in this race. We have all entered into this race by faith. <clears throat> when I was trying to think about some different things that people deal with in their lives and, and different circumstances, different burdens, different things that, it could, be, that could, be, could become a hindrance for, their, for their, this race of faith that they're in. One of the things I thought about was fear. The weight of fear. Some of you may be here today and, and fear has consumed you. Maybe you have a fear of man or a fear of failure or a fear of, of loss. Maybe, you're, 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 maybe fear just has such a hold on you that it feels like it has enslaved you. And that's a weight that you carry around with you in your spiritual backpack. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe you have something in your life that you're addicted to, whether that be drugs, alcohol, porn, whatever it may be, nicotine. Maybe you have an addiction that has consumed your life and it's become such a burden to you that it's a hindrance for this race that you're involved in, this race of faith. Well, it's a weight that you carry around with you in your spiritual backpack. Maybe it's acceptance. Maybe you're here today and, and you have felt like you have never fit in anywhere. Maybe you feel like you've been rejected. Maybe from your family, your friends, whoever it may be. Maybe you're here today and, and you have a problem with feeling accepted wherever you go. Well, that's a burden, a weight that you carry around with you in your spiritual backpack. Maybe it's hurts. Maybe somebody has hurt you so deeply. Maybe the wound is so deep that you feel like that's beyond healing. It's a hurt that you've carried around with you maybe from childhood. And everywhere you go, something is reminding you of that hurt and bringing up the pain that comes along with that hurt. And it's become a burden for you. That's another weight you carry in your spiritual backpack. Maybe it's pride. Maybe pride has become a burden for you. Maybe, maybe you just can't, because of this pride in this, in this area of your life where maybe it's God speaking to you and trying to he prompt you to make a choice, a decision for Him, but because you're so self-sufficient and self-reliant, you can't surrender to His will for your life. Because you just can't let go of it. You can't loosen your grip from it. Or maybe it's pride in another area. Maybe it's a pride of, of you may be out on the outside, look like the most humblest person around, but, but yet inside you have pride that, that wells up within you that causes you to fear and to doubt and have anxiety because of your fear of man and what people might think of you. It's another burden, another weight that you carry around in your spiritual backpack. Or maybe it's prejudiced. Maybe you were brought up in a home where you were taught that there was a certain race of people or a certain class of people that was lower than you. 
This is a big one we're dealing with in our nation right now. Am I right? That's another spiritual weight, burden that you carry around with you. Unnecessary. But it's something, it's a weight that you carry around in your spiritual backpack. Or maybe it's past failure. Maybe you have a past that haunts you. Maybe you have done some things, made some mistakes in your life in the past and or maybe you had high expectations and, and you didn't reach those goals or those certain things that you had planned in your life. And, and those, that past, those things come back to haunt you and they become a burden for you, a weight that you carry. And that's another weight that you carry around in your spiritual backpack. This is a big one, church. Worry. Maybe... You're one of those people like I am most, most a lot of times. When, when you got this on your mind all the time, man, what, what about tomorrow? What about my bills that are getting paid? What about my children? What about this? What about that? And it's always on your mind. It's, it's always there. And, and you just can't seem to get away from it. This worry. And that's another weight, another burden that you carry around in your spiritual backpack. Maybe it's guilt and shame. Maybe because of your past and that past that comes back to haunt you and those mistakes that you've made, you carry with you a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. And that guilt and that shame hinders you in your walk of faith because you don't feel worthy. You don't feel like you should be accepted. You don't feel like you're worthy of the grace and mercy that God has offered you. So you carry around with you this weight of guilt and this weight of shame. And you carry it with you in your spiritual backpack. Probably one of the biggest ones. Unforgiveness. Maybe you're here today and somebody has hurt you deeply. They have done something that to you that has caused you great pain and grief. And you just don't feel like there's any way that you could ever come to a place in your life where you could forgive that person. And it's always on your mind. It's always on your heart. So you're always carrying around with you. It's a burden. It's a weight. And you carry it around with you in a spiritual backpack. And I'm going to stop there because each one of those burdens weighs five pounds. <laughs> and I just listed ten of them so you do the math. What you do is you carry those spiritual burdens with you everywhere you go. You know, I, I consider myself in, in, okay, decent shape, okay? <laughs> Nikki would probably tell you differently because she already did tell you differently. <laughs> I feel like that, I feel pretty confident that I could, you know, I could run around this building at least twice. Or at least once, without stopping. But not with this backpack on. With this backpack, I'd be doing good to get to the front door in a sprint, in a jog, maybe a slow walk. <laughs> the writer of Hebrews is saying here, listen, because we've been surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those, those patriarchs of the faith who have experienced and dealt with situations that you and I can't even imagine. But they have come across on the other side of it victoriously. And he's saying because we have that great cloud of witness, he says what? He says, lay aside every weight. Church, get rid of it. Throw it down. Lay it aside. Get rid of it. You can't run the race and be effective and make progress if you're carrying all that baggage and all that weight, all those burdens on your backpack. He said, lay it all down, every, every weight. And the sin that so easily ensnares you. Get rid of it.
probably thinking to yourself, sounds, sounds good, Randy. Sounds real good. How in the world do I do that? I've tried. I've tried letting go of it, but I just can't get rid of it. How do I, how do I shed this weight? How do I get rid of this baggage? The writer of Hebrews tells us, Church, I'm going to share with you the key of how to get rid of that baggage today. <clears throat> he says in verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. <clears throat> Looking unto Jesus. And Jesus says, listen, he has, he has finished His race. He has fulfilled the will of His Father. And, and it goes on to tell us how He sits at the right hand of the throne of God now. Let me tell you how I picture this, church. I picture Jesus because He has already finished this race. He is standing at the finish line. And just like a coach is agging on his runner to finish this race, to stay in it, he, Jesus is sitting at the, at the finish line and he's, and he's telling you, stay in, the, stay in the race. Don't give up. Don't quit yet. It's hard. It's difficult. But don't give up. Get rid of that weight. Shed it. Don't let it be a hindrance for you. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 121, he says, I will look unto the hills, he says. He says, for whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He says, well, I, I, I will look to the hills. We must look to Jesus. We must look up. If we're, not, if we're looking anywhere else, if we're looking around us or behind us, then we're not looking to the hills, we're looking to the valleys. And let me tell you what's in the valleys, church. The, in the valley is, is, is dry bones. It's where you came from. That's not who you are any longer. Ezekiel was called into a valley. When he, when he came to this valley, he said, I saw, all I saw was dry bones. And the Lord speaks to Ezekiel and he asks him a question. He says, Ezekiel, can, can these bones live? And he, Ezekiel answers the Lord. He says, Lord, you know. He says, God, all I can see in this valley is, is dry bones. And no, if you're asking me, can these bones live? How? There, there's no life in them. There's no breath. There's no... They're dead. The Lord then tells Ezekiel, He says, Ezekiel... Prophesy to these bones and tell those bones that they shall live. Yes. And it says that Ezekiel prophesied to the bones and all of a sudden there was a shaking and a rattling and bone to bone started joining together and, and the Lord put sinews on it and, and skin and flesh and they became alive. And he said, he said now prophesy to the winds and, cause, and I will cause breath to enter into them. And he gave them life. Church, that's a picture of where we were before Christ. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. Lost without hope. But because of the author and the finisher of our faith and what He has done in finishing that race, He has breathed life into us. He has brought the bones together. He has put the sinews and the, and the flesh on us. And He has breathed life into us by His Holy Spirit. So no longer are we dead. We're alive. And listen, He has set us free from all the guilt and all the shame. Therefore, there, therefore is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to carry that burden of guilt, that burden of fear, that burden of shame, of worry, or, or whatever else you, you carry in your backpack. You don't have to. Jesus says the thief has come, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I have come that you may have life and life more abundant. Yeah. Amen. Abundant life. Yes. Abundant life isn't back here looking in the valley and, and looking at the dry bones where there's no life. The valley, the, listen, the abundant life is looking unto the hills from which your help comes from. Yeah. Looking unto the Lord, the maker of the heavens and earth. He's the one who, is, who we place our hope and our trust in. And Him alone. 
So if you're carrying this word burden of guilt or shame or addiction or whatever you may be struggling with and, and you think, man, I, I don't know how to let go of it, Randy. How do I get rid of this? It's only God. Only God can deliver you. Look unto Him. And I can tell you, I want you to get this picture in your head because I can't get it out of my head. This picture of Jesus standing at the finish line, agging you on, telling you don't give up, don't stop. You stay in this race. Get rid of the shame, get rid of the guilt, get rid of the baggage that you carry, the weight of burden and guilt. Get rid of it. And finish your race well. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, he says this. He says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but no one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for this prize the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to, t to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imp imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself might become disqualified. I want to clarify a few things in that passage of Scripture. What Paul is not speaking of, he's not speaking of us of a works-based salvation. He's not saying that you have to strive and work for your salvation. That comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and that confession of faith and that alone. He's not saying that in some way, if he doesn't finish this well, he's going to become disqualified from the race. He's saying that this is how we should run our race as if we could lose it. As if we do have to gain it. He's saying that we are to run this race with endurance. To be determined to, to stay in the race no matter what. To finish this race of faith. Follow the example that we have of these great patriarchs of the faith who accomplished such great things for the Lord. To know that each and every one of us also has a plan that God has placed in our and before us in our lives for us to do and accomplish. And if we keep our eyes on Him, if we stay in the race and we shed the weight, I believe that's what God is speaking to us today, church. Is that we need to get rid of the weight. For too long we've been carrying it. Now, I made a list of certain weights that we carry. Certain things that you and I carry in our lives. Weights, these burdens. And there's several things in here that, listen, I deal with. I'm not immune to these things. But I want to make a decision today. I want to make a decision to lay it down. To shed the weight so that I can finish my race well. As if, like he says, run in such a way that you may obtain it. Run as if, man, that it's run as if it's the greatest thing in your life and it's something that you want and desire so desperately for. The Apostle Paul was speaking of of these Olympians who would come to Greece and they would train and they would train and train and train and discipline their bodies and take it to a, such a place and to where they could run these races and win their prize. Church, as the body of Christ, as believers, as Christians, we are to discipline our bodies. We are to train spiritually for these races, for this race that we are in, so that we can run with endurance. Endurance means that, listen, that there is, that in, even when it, it seems like it's so difficult that you want to quit, something within you causes you to, to say, to rise up and get you through to the end. 
Run with endurance that race that has been set before you. And what I want to do, church, today, we're going to do invitation a little bit differently today. I'm going to have the praise team come up here for a moment. And they're going to play through a song. And I had asked... I had asked them to hand you guys out an index card with a pen. But what I want you to do is I want you to take that index card. Nobody has to see it. This is between you and God. I want you to take that index card and I want, to, I want you to write on that index card a weight, a burden that you know that you have been carrying with you that has hindered your walk, that has hindered your race. I want you to fold it up and I want you to pray over it and I want you to give it to God. And then I want you to come forward and I want you to bring it and I want you to throw it in this trash can. church, that's what we do with the weight, the burden. We lay it aside. We get rid of it. We don't go back there. Whatever it may be. Whatever burden, whatever weight you've been carrying with you. Write it down. Fold it. Pray over it. And then bring it Throw it away. Lay it aside. Amen.